20 years ago, Jurassic Park filled movie theaters with images of living dinosaurs. The movie magic added a simplistic shine to the science. This fossilized tree sap, which we call amber, waited for millions of years with the mosquito inside until Jurassic Park scientists came along. Using sophisticated techniques, they extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and, bingo, dino DNA. Real science wasn't quite ready then, but now the researchers have developed enough tools that the idea of reviving an extinct species isn't so far-fetched. Oliver Ryder is a geneticist at the San Diego Zoo. He looks after arguably the zoo's most valuable collection. So this is the room that holds the tanks that comprise the frozen zoo. Um, this one holds the living cells that are in suspended animation. Nitrogen freezes tissue samples from about 10,000 individual animals. They represent about 1,000 distinct species. But if there's one thing you could save, it would be living cells. Cells are fundamental units of life. They are uh, able to replicate themselves. All organisms start their lives or live their lives as a single cell. Each cell contains a complete genetic blueprint. Ryder says these tanks hold the potential to change the evolutionary path. Right now, the collection only has tissue from one extinct species, a bird from Hawaii, but it might be the only hope for another species that is rushing headlong toward extinction. We have cells from 12 northern white rhinos uh, here, there are only seven alive on the planet. We have their cells, and we have cells from unrelated individuals and their parents that predeceased them. Ryder says those cells could be the key to keeping the rhinos alive or even bringing the species back after the remaining animals die. That's territory the Zoological Society's Michael Mace is familiar with. The Society's curator of birds helped the California condor fly away from extinction in the 1980s. That 22-bird condor population now has nearly 400 birds. If we're working with species like condors that have a very finite gene pool, the ability to recruit genes from museum specimens, for example, could change the playing field genetically. Tapping into a new source of genetic code would be like finding an undiscovered population. It increases genetic diversity and it boosts chances for species survival. We have a planet that every day another species is lost. And so people are starting to, to put those concepts together and say, we've got critically endangered species declining, we've got ecosystems that are disappearing, and do we have the technology to stop some of those big concerns and issues that are affecting all of us? But propping up a species on the brink of extinction isn't as controversial as raising a species from the extinction pile. Mastodon, mammoth, other types of species. It's a very complex science to be able to do that. It's an even more complex and compelling discussion about whether one should. And not everybody thinks that's a great idea. I would like to hear a good reason um, for doing it other than because we can do it. There are lots of things we can do that perhaps we ought not to do. Suzanne Holland is a religion professor at the University of Puget Sound. She's not sure that lifting the stamp of extinction is good for people or the planet. We have critical health care needs. We have, we have critical scientific funding needs. This does not seem to be, as far as I can tell, at the top of any list to the benefit of humanity. But the argument isn't being waged with absolutes, and even Holland says there could be legitimate reasons to bring a species back. A potential candidate for de-extinction is the passenger pigeon. The bird was shot out of existence, but northeastern hardwood forests are suffering as a result. There's a push to bring passenger pigeons back so they can distribute the seeds crucial for the forest's survival. Geneticist Oliver Ryder says some scientific issues still need to be worked out, but many tools are already in place. The possibility of cloning has been around for over a decade. The possibility to induce pluripotency, that is to make skin cells into stem cells, has been around for four or five years. 
what's uh, energized this discussion has been bringing back extinct species. Oh, oh perfect timing. I'd hope they'd hatch before I had to go to the boat. Henry, 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 why didn't you tell me? I insist oh. on being here when they're born. The science may be catching up with the science fiction, but researchers are still debating the ethics of de-extinction. That discussion will more than likely write the story. Eric Anderson, KPBS News. Push. Very oh, good. God.